conferred with star status by DBT and Curie grant by DST Government of India and top national and state rankings by India Today and Outlook magazine. We are gathered here to commemorate National Chemistry Week 2022 on the theme Fabulous Fibers, the Chemistry of Fabrics. So I would like to acknowledge the presence of eminent speaker of the day, Dr. Sachin Kumar. Welcome, sir. Now I would like to invite Dr. Shikha to formally introduce and welcome eminent speaker of the day. Over to you, Shikha. A very good afternoon, one and all. It's my privilege to introduce the speaker of the day, Dr. Sachin Kumar, who is going to deliver his talk on fabulous fibers, the chemistry of fabrics. Dr. Sachin is working as assistant professor in Department of Apparel and Textile Technology, Guru Nanak Dev University. He did his, uh, he did his doctorate from Guru Nanak Dev University in the field of material chemistry. He has more than 18 years of research and teaching experience. Dr. Kumar has published 32 papers in reputed national and international journals. Sir, it gives us immense pleasure to have you eagerly to hear you. So, we welcome you, sir, and the platform is yours now. Over to Thank you very much for a nice introduction. So my PowerPoint is visible to all. Hello. No, sir. So now visible. Yes, sir. So first of all, I want to thank the organizing committee of Kanya Mahavidyalaya for giving opportunity for this talk, the fabulous fiber, the chemistry of fabrics. Being from a textile background, so I'm, I give a good inputs on this. Otherwise, it is very difficult for um, a purely chemistry backgrounds to discuss about a fabulous fibers. So fabulous fibers, every fiber which we use in a daily life is fabulous fibers due to its implications. So before going to details into the all fibers, I'm going to uh, uh, give the introduction about the contents which I am going to discuss in this presentations. So what are the uses of fibers other than clothing, definition of fibers? Most of the fibers are made up of polymers. So I will discuss about the what is polymer and different types which are used in our fibers, then conventional fibers, and in the end, the high performance and functional fibers, which are nowadays. Before starting this, I give some glimpses of my university and departments. And then I start the actual presentations. So I hardly spend two, three minutes in that. So, so presentation. Yeah. So first of all, this is uh, my university, Gurunanak Dev University. And these are the, some of the pictures of a university, Asia House, Khalsa Heritage, Dalhousie Guest House. Then botanical garden, lecture hall, main library, and Maharaja Ranji Singh Bhavan. Then these are the some other pictures of Gurdwara Sahib, boys, girls, hostels. Then these are the sports activity which are in the universities. Then other than sports, cultures, and other student activities carried by different clubs. Then about my departments. So my department started as applied chemical sciences. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, sir. Your volume is too low. Okay. It, it's hardly audible. I mean, uh, audible. Hello. Now it is audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now it is a uh, uh, little better. So our department started in 1995 as a BSc in textile chemistry. Then 1997, under the demand of industry, we are converted into B.Tech textile chemistry. 
and 2018 onwards to further widen the job horizon we converted into textile processing technology in 2022 we also started another msc in apparel and textiles and department is renamed as the department of apparel and textile technologies so these are the courses which are taught in the department fiber science yarn manufacturing fabric printing technical textiles garment merchandising and textile testings these are the two courses which are run here btech and msc course so these are some testing facilities test lab chemical testing labs fabric machine dyeing lab printing lab and computer color matching systems is there so student academic activities in the departments we have produced some recycled products from the denim because denim is the most popular garment in the world then we exhibit in the foundation day so these are the glimpses of that so we have a 100% placement since 1998 and we have a package around 3 to 9.5 these are our recruiters so now i switch over to our main topic that is the fabulous fibers so you can see the spider man swings lights and jump through the streets of new york city in a movie spider mans the webs which is used for moving from one building to another so this is a similar to a polymer which is a nylon and this is a best one of the best examples of fabulous fibers are used so now i move ahead so the end use of a fibers other than clothing so we are always surrounded by fibers throughout our lives since birth to till death so since we wake up early in the morning so first of all we go to a bathroom and having a toothbrush the bristle which are made up of nylons and polyester fibers then all the daily activities our bag purses car in which we are sitting the whole stuff is made up of a textile fibers in the end in the night when we go to a bed the pillow bed sheet blanket is made up of cotton or a polyester a fiber so whole day we are surrounded by a, a fibers so basic needs of a life is also contain a lot of fibers so basic needs are roti kapda and makan so in our dietary components lot of fiber components are there and these are very very beneficial for our health also so nowadays in all the things we are looking for a fiber because it is very helpful in our digestions then kap kapda or a clothing everything which is we wear is also made up of our or different types of fibers then housing in a housing also we are using a lot of so you can see the transparent gates or the roofs which which is a basically a composite of a fiber reinforced composites or now a day a pipe is also we are using for making gates so which are also made up of a, a natural fibers so now what is a fiber so fiber is a unit of matter characterized by flexibility fineness and high l by d ratio or we can also call aspect ratio so it means its length is 100 times its diameters so majority of fibers are micromolecules or we can say are polymers like in nature so fibers are basically classified into two types depending upon their lengths so one is called staple fiber staple fiber is of small size having a definite length it could be from 1 cm to a 50 cm examples are natural fibers like a cotton wool jute these all are a staple fibers second category is the filament filament is a very long continuous strand of fiber of indefinite length could be anything any length it could be 100 meter or 100 kilometers so that is called a, a filaments Exa examples are among the natural fiber silk is a filament other is nylon and polyester these are the synthetic versions these are also a uh, filaments so as we know all the fibers are made up of polymers so we will discuss bit about what is a polymer so polymer means uh, consist of a two different words a poly means a many and mer means units so it is a combination of a, a many units so polymers are a large class of material consisting of a very small molecules monomer that can be combined or linked together to form a long chains 
so when large numbers of monomers are combined together it will give us a, a polymers so important terms related to if the that unit is if one then we use a word monomer mono means single and mer means units so single units so when the unit length is up to 9 then then we call it as oligomer if more than 9 then only we use a word a polymers then other terms are like telechelic polymer and oligomers a polymer which having a reactive end group is called telechelic polymer and a monomer having a telechelic or you can say a reactive group is called telechelic oligomer macro word, word is also interchangeably we can use having a long chain length that is called a macro -mer. So other important term is degree of polymerization. So degree of polymerization is related to how many monomer units are joined together. If the number of monomers are 9, then its degree of polymerization is 9, or if it is 10 or 11. So it depends upon how many monomers are combined together to form a polymer that is called degree, because this is very, very important in a textile fibers also. So like this is a vinyl chlorides. So when n number of monomers combined together by addition polymerization, we will get a polyvinyl chlorides. Then effect of this degree of polymerization on physical state and properties of a different materials. So simplest molecules that we have is say a methane. So it is it is exist in a gas state. Its boiling point is one sixty four minus minus one sixty four. As we increase to a two carbon atom. So its molecular weight is, is its melting point is further reduced. Boiling point is further reduced. Then propane, then further reduced butane, it is minus 5. So this, why this happen? With increase in the size, the inter, intermolecular forces of interactions are increased. That results in increase in boiling point as well as the state. So up to butane, these molecules are exist in gaseous state. Pentane is a liquid and hexane is also liquids. So this slide show how the increase in chain length or you can say the DP, their change is a physical behavior as well as the other properties. Up to four carbon atom, it is a simple gas. When we further move to 11 carbon atom, it is a liquid. As we further increase, it increases into a highly viscous liquid, then a semi-crystalline solid, and ultimately a tough plastic solids. And then we have a high performance fibers that could be used for a surgical gloves or a bulletproof jackets. Then its effects on our temperature also. As we increase the molecular weights, the melting temperature of a polymer is increased, but again saturate after a certain level. Because beyond that, there is a, a bending of a chain starts and there is no further increase in intermolecular forces of attraction that leads to the saturation points. So then and again, a comparison of a wax and polythene. So wax is having a low molecular weights. When it combined together, the van der Waal forces are the main forces of attraction. So they are very less. When we make it to a fiber that is very, very long, you can see the chain folding take place and then level of interaction is higher. And it, when level of interaction is higher and pains are more, it is converted into a crystalline as well as amorphous regions. So why we are increasing juice polymeric material over metal roots? The reason is they are easy to mold and convert into any desired shape. They are very cheap, lightweight, tough, flexible, transparent, and generally insulating our natures. So then there's some certain limitation also polymeric material. One of the major limitations, they are non-biodegradable in, in nature. So they accumulate. And second is they can't be used for high temperature applications. So these are the two major limitations of polymers. Now the classification of a polymers on the basis of origin, either they are natural or they are synthetic or a man-made. So natural polymers like proteins and plant materials like cellulose, lignin and chitin. So these are the polymers which come from a life or you can say natural like a wood, cotton, potatoes, sheep, silkworm, rubber and oil deposits. These are the natural products. Then synthetic which we derive from coal, petroleum and natural coal. So these are the some of the examples like first is a polyester, high density polythene, polyvinyl, low density polythene 
polystyrene and these are the sum of the these are their recycling symbols are also mentioned so that we can recycle these material easily then on the basis of physical behavior and art architectures so there is a thermoplastic materials having a linear or slightly a branch chains elastomers having a cross links thermosets having a network like of a structure which which are not can be easily easily push apart so they are non melting behavior that is why they are called thermosets then types of a co copolymers they are homopolymers having a single monomeric units then different type of a copolymers on the basis of their arrangements there are further four types like a random copolymers means a and b two monomers are arranged randomly there is a no order so that is why we use a word alternative means a b a b there is a some order is there then blocks block of a a a and then block of b b graft means there is a main main backbone on which you graft another second monomer on it then polymer architectures alternative monomers random co monomers then block of polymers and a grafted then thermo plastic and thermosets so generally linear polymers are linear polymers are thermoplastic in nature because on heating they will depart from each others so molecular vibrations takes place very easily and material melts then when there we in, introduce a cross links the movement of these materials is significantly reduced and this cross links energy required to break the cross link is equal to the energy required to break the main chain so that is why they prefer to degrade instead of a melting so that is why they they call it a thermosets so another category is a highly cross link that is called a network structures so depending upon their structure we can define their application so thermoplastics are generally pp pet polyethylene and nylons thermosets which do not melts like vulcanized rubber epoxy that can be used for other kind of uh, applications then classifications of a uh, fibers fibers are broadly classified into a two type either they are natural or a man made so naturals are further classified into two types so animal fiber or a vegetable fiber animal fibers like a silk and another is a wool which is obtained from hair vegetable further fibers are further classified into four types the fiber which is obtained from the seed coat are called uh, is a cotton from the inner bark that is a flax hemp jute from the leaf thistle and becca and from the fruit that is a coir then we have a, another category that is a man made man made as further classified into two major type one is a artificial or we can also call them regenerated fiber because we regenerate them from a natural sources like we have a viscous rayon fiber which we obtain from the wood okay and then we have say alginate or a protein fibers like a soa fiber which we regenerate from we abstract or we take out a polymer from a natural sources and then we convert them into a, a fibers synthetic fibers that are pure, purely made from the chemicals so say for example we have a polyester so polyester is made up of two different a monomers so we mix two chemicals together and then make a fiber so that is called a synthetic fiber synthetic fibers are again of various types one is organic then inorganic metallic and some inorganic fibers like a glass fiber carbon fiber thus so these are fall under the high performance category then history history of natural fibers so oldest indication of fibers is probably around 17 Seventh uh, and sixth century B B C. So wool and and flax fibers are available at that times. Hemp is among the oldest cultivated fiber that is reported in Asia in China is around forty five hundred B C. Reports of spinning of cotton in India date back from three thousand B C. Invention and development of silk is also reported from China in two six four zero B C. then man made fibers so man made fibers are not very old they are the young generation fibers so first attempt is carried out to produce a synthetic fiber is in 1660 but that is not successful but actual the patent was followed by a swiss chemist that is odomer in 1885 
but it this is not again the commercial significance at that time so later the french chemist hilary de chornot was the first to produce artificial fiber that is called viscous rayon that make a success commercially in 1889 so you can say the first man made fibers which comes into picture is a viscous rayon fiber then another company in 1924 silens that produce acetate fiber so that is again a modified version of a cellulose so acetate groups are form on the cellulose uh, hydroxy groups so hydroxy groups when replaced with acetate group then we call it a acetate fibers so among the set synthetic fibers nylon 6 is the first fiber purely which is made out of chemical is by carothers dupont company us in 1938 so this is a beginning of a new era of synthetic fibers and that is a very very revolutionary step in the history of a, a fibers beyond that the lot of fibers comes into a picture but the major fiber that first discovered is nylon 66 so after the discovery of nylon the first product which is made is the socks or the stocking made out of the which is used by a woman so they are sold in uh, millions in numbers in usa after the discovery of this so this is a revolutionary change bring so other fibers chronicle order of their discovery so first is a nylon 66 then in 1949 then mod acrylic was discovered in 53 polyester spandex 1959 then polyolefin that are obtained from oil source like polythene and polypropylene that it developed in 1961 then aramids now all at these are the category of a high performance fibers chloro fibers 1917 the example is a teflon which is generally used for the coating purpose then a carbon fiber that is 1970 so you can see the share in 1940 by the share of synthetic fiber is hardly 30% but today they are dominating and they totally replace the natural fibers so their share is around 75 percent plus conventional and regular fibers so among the them the here we can say the king cotton the countries like india or a temperature hot climate this is a best fiber to wear for a, a clothing purpose so initially this is a plant based fibers so first picture is of a plant of then there is the flowers white color of flowers are there when these uh convert a small bud so that converted into a pink color and then when the whole system is developed we have a, this kind of a bud or we can call it a, a ball and this ball when open breast and will give a white color of fibers so this is a unique fibers that can be microscopically identified among the large number of fibers this is the only fiber having a this cross sectional view and twisted strand okay this is the only fiber having a this kind of a microbes so their polymer is basically cellobios unit that is a combination of a two glucose groups when come condensed together by the removal of a water we will get a, a, a chemical structure that is called cellobios so here in case of a cotton the degree of polymerization n is around 5000 okay but still by synthetic means we are not able to produce this much high dp fibers even it is difficult to produce a cellulose of around a dp of 250 to 300 so nature is a very smart way of doing the things but we cannot replicate these thing in our laboratory still so what are the advantages so this is a highly absorbent keep human body cool because its nature is conducting it conducts the heat or you can say dissipate our heat which is developed by a metabolism or our activities that is why it gives a, a cool feel then comfortable to wheel this has a non melting behavior very very soft fiber and light in weights so but it also has some limitations so major limitation is it is having a high wrinkling tendency then susceptible to mildew and strong acid strong acid damage this fiber and another limitation is cotton fiber having a, a shrinkage tendency so these are the products which are made up of cotton the bed sheet covers the most popular apparel that is denim is also made up of 100% cotton but nowadays it is blended with synthetic also then earbuds towels most of them 
still now inner garments or under garments which we wear are still made up of 100% cotton no other fiber is because it is very very hypoallergic in nature so it has no effect on the skin so that is why still the inner under garments which we wear are made up of a, a cottons another beautiful fiber is a flax that is also fall in the luxurious category because this fiber is only grown in cold countries this is not available in temperate country like india so generally european country grow this fibers so this is a vast fibers so initially we have this kind of a plant then we uproot it with this and retting this for the removal of a fibers then we dry it and we have get this kind of fibers so this is a cross section of a plant of fibers having these small small green color balls are the fiber bundles and then dark this yellow color is basically a lignin so by the process of retting we remove these fibers so this fi fibers also have a unique cross sections this you can say the longitudinal view as well as cross sectional view there are knots okay this knots are there and this fiber is cross section is a polygon in shape so you can see this is not a, a circular section this having a multiple faces that is why we call it a polygon then this is again a cellulose fiber so cellobiosis monomeric units and its dp is very very high so uh, we already told you the dp of uh, cotton cotton is around 5000 so its dp is around say a uh, 15000 or so or more than that so that is why it's due to its long bony it's stronger than cotton another advantage is it having a best wicking among the natural fibers again it is also conducting in natures that is why it's cool to wear dry very quickly strong and durable and do not melts limitations so its wrinkling tendency is even more than that of cotton so it is due to its stiff nature due to long polymeric chains or a higher dp that is results in a more stiffening nature and more stiffer is the material more is the tendency of a wrinkling so when we repeatedly iron at a same place its color fades so color froze on regular creasing so these are the application table linens bed linens then a clothing another fiber jute or we can also call a golden fiber due to its golden colors so we are the biggest producer of a jute and not only the biggest producer we india is the biggest exporter of a jute also so similar to the uh, linen this is also a bark fiber but it, it is easily grown in uh, yamuna gangetic plain mero a plain of india because it consume lot of water so you can see the its length is around 8 to 10 meters then we cut the fibers and then process of retting is used for loosening the fiber bundle from the lignin component then we dried it and then we abstract the fiber and then bundle it in sold it so it is again a polygon shape you can see its cross section it is also polygon shape monomer is again the similar because it is obtained from a plant so monomer is again cellobios so its dp is slightly lesser than of a uh, linen fiber but it is more than that of a, a cotton so advantages it is biodegradable in nature good absorbency higher than cotton low cost strong and durable again do not melt but major limitation of this is this is very thick in diameter and harsh in hand, handles so that is why next to skin clothing this is not used but otherwise it is a very good fiber for a packing purpose so these are the applications generally bags whatever the food grains we have nowadays most of these are packed in jute and gunny bags which are made up of a jute so other major application of this is in basically in geotextiles in which especially in the road embankments or the embankments of a river or a canals so to avoid the soil ero erosion we use this fibers so it it degrades very slowly meanwhile your plants or degrade can easily bind the soils and then it decompose and become a part of a soil so it is a very eco friendly fiber in that view another fiber beautiful fiber that is a, a bamboo fiber which is obtained from bamboo plants 
So bamboo is generally used for a decoration purposes in home. So it, when we grow it, it has a height is around eight to 10 meters, depending upon varieties. When we extract during a ratting process, then we have a, this kind of a brown color of fibers. This is again a polygon shade cross section. And it, its polymer is, is again cellulose, the similar to cotton. But the DP is, is slightly higher than cotton, but less than jutes. So major property of it, this is biodegradable in nature, very soft. Another major property of this, which separate from other phase, it's natural antimicrobial properties. So nowadays after a COVID, we are looking for the materials which having antimicrobial fiber properties. So bamboo based materials are the fabrics which having a natural antimicrobial property, which we can buy. Then low cost and do not match. So other limitations are similar to other fibers, like low mechanical properties, low durability, and fiber is non-uniform in cross sections. So these are the product which we can produce from a bamboo fire, normal clothing, which we wears can be produced. This also has application in biomedical applications due to its antimicrobial nature. Another beautiful fiber that is a silks. So it is again a ancient history, very old fibers origin from China. So it uh, obtained from the silk worms. So you can see the white color of worm. They grow on mulberry trees. And after a certain period of a time, they start eating leaves and they are big in size. To protect themselves from predator, they eject a fluid from their heads and that converted into a white color cocoon. Okay, so these are the cocoon. In the last, you can say very bright, luscious material that is your a silk. So when we get a fiber that there is a bundle of two fibers are there. So, so outer coating you can see in this picture that is a saracen, and then inside there is a fibroin. Fibroin is a fiber and saracen and naturally natural coating, waxy coating, which protect it from the external environment for for a use for a textile on any other application purpose, we remove this seracin coating. So it is made up of again around 18 amino acids. So it is protein in nature. So silk is used for military clothing from ages due to its light weight and very high strength by Mongolian armies. So also used in wound dressing by ancient Chinese and Egyptian peoples. So as the names comes in licks, it is a luxurious lightweight dye to beautiful color, highly absorbent and strong fiber. Mm -hmm. Among the natural fibers, this is, you can say, conventional fiber, this is a, a strongest fibers. So limitations is again, it is very strong in strength when you apply a force, but otherwise when you treat chemically or ironing, it is a very, very delicate and precious fiber. We have to handle very care. So mostly the silk products are dry clean. Okay, we can go. We can't take a risk of a washing because it is a very, very a delicate. We can't machine wash this fiber. So these are the applications. So in a, conventionally, it is used for a fishing this thread. Then it is used as a suture in biomedical application, was to stitching a wound that can be easily absorbed by absorb for the internal wound closer. This is used. Then due to a strong nature, it can be also used for a parachutes. And nowadays for a ladies wear, this is one of the a popular fiber as for a silk sarees. Then in embroidery purpose due to its luster is also widely used, but it's very, very costly as compared to other fibers. Spider silk. This is again a wonder fiber or a fabulous fibers. You can say because of its strength, but the major problem is this is not a, still now commercially produced, commercially viability is there. So some special kind of spiders are there which, which produce a, a fluid that when comes into air solidify and give, gives a, a very high strength. You can see this uh, picture uh, showing the small, small spinnerets which are on the body of the, and that produce a very, very fine and a delicate fiber. But it is very, very strong. Again, it is made up of is a spider silk. So it is a protein fiber. It's made of around 15 different amino acids. So advantages, very light in weight. And it also has an antimicrobial property. Excellent thermal conductivity, strong 
so spider silk is by weight is five times stronger than steel and three times stronger than the tougher material that which we synthetically made is a kevlar ideal bio material do not match but its commercial viability is not there so that is it has a very high cost easily breaks if it is not taken care okay and catches fire up quickly these are the some of the limitations if it is commercially produced then it is a very very good fiber in the future so these are the some of the applications like bulletproof jackets and masks so this is a yellow colored fabric which is made up of a spider silk we can also use for a sutures this also yellow colored dress is also made up of a silk then wool so so it is obtained from the domesticated sheep or the wild sheep so after shearing you can remove a fiber but the fiber is very very dirty it contain a lot of suet natural wax and a lot of vegetable matter so by processing we remove it and make a it's it's cross section is round to oval and this is a longitudinal view so like cotton this wool also have a unique cross sections when we have to identify cotton and wool two are the natural fiber which can be easily distinguish in large number of <laughs> due to this its cross sections so its cross uh, cross section as well as its a longitudinal view so these are the scales <laughs> so these are the two chemical structures sorry sir uh, i just want to say uh, to the participants please mute yourself so thank you and please mute yourself so these two structures are there one is helicant kind of a structure so this helicant kind of a structure which is of a wool and another this parallel structure which is of a silk okay so the silk having a very high elasticity due to its helical kind of structure so it's behave like a, a spring so advantages warm and comfortable to wear warm due to its insulative property cotton is a conducting but this is insulative in non conducting in nature that gives us a warm highly absorbent wrinkle resistance mold and easily to any shape water repellent flame retardant so among the natural fiber wool is a flame retardant material so but again it is easily damaged by a chemicals especially alkali has a very a bad effect on this it also loses strength when wet and very very sensitive so these are the products wide range of products are there mostly winter wear products on some of the sports wear also and especially for a high attitude application in lay ladakh for a soldier the clothing is made up of high grade merino wools or kashmira wools that is a very a costly because the cost is depend upon the fineness of wool more the fine is wool more number of scales are there and more number of scales are there more air is in trap inside that scales so major role of warmth is provided by air air act as a very good insulator so more warmth is provided as the fineness of and cost is higher as the fiber become more and more finers another category of natural fiber that is asbestos asbestos is a fiber which which is obtained from the rocks so these are the different minerals chrysolite cocodotalite and amcide are the different mineral from which this fiber is obtained but this fiber in nowadays is least used due to its non biodegradable and carcinogenic natures but still some applications are for a textile purpose is not used but some other application they are used so this is very strong inherently flame proof this is a major characteristics of this fibers also chemically resistance and good sound insulation properties these are the some of the applications the roof and also for a robes generally for insulation purposes and these are the brake pads in automobiles are made up of this fibers then some pipes are also made this is also used for some filtration purposes viscous fiber so this is among this is also called artificial silk or art silk so, so its luster is like a silk but 
its cost is very very less so very cheap as compared to a silk this is obtained from the trees so we have a trees we cut into a logs and then we chipped into a very small pieces and by a process which is used for manufacturing of paper is similar used here and that is converted into a white color pulp sheets if we directly use and directly can convert into paper but in case of manufacturing of a viscous rayon we dissolve them in a alkali so we, that polymer is dissolved and then we spun and passes through some spinneret and converted into a fibrous materials so its cross section is this uh, longitudinal is having a irregular surfaces and as a we are producing the, in a laboratory so we can modify its cross section according to our needs so this is also as we obtain from plant so it is monomeric cellu bios but major limitation with this its limit uh, its dp is very very low its dp is around 250 to 300 so that is why it is very weak fiber as compared to cotton and so this is a manufacturing process we have a wood pulp we steep into a alkali then we squeeze it and shred it into a smaller pieces it is con converted into alkali cellulose during aging aging process the deep polymerization of this fiber takes place then we use a carbon disulfide gas that convert the cellulose into a cellulose xanthate and cellulose then xanthate is easily soluble in 3 to 4% of sodium hydroxide solution then solution ripens we filter it the undissolved component and ultimately we spun by using a wet spanning technique and we get a filament of, out of them by washing and depulverization so this is the process how we can obtain a uh, fiber from a uh, wood so these are the their advantages very soft in handle lustrous like a silk due to its cross sectional dye easily relatively inexpensive absorbent do not melt the major limitation is it is weak when wet so it loses around 40 to 50 percent strength when wet that is a major limitation otherwise very good so other it having low lingering wrinkling or a creasing tendency as compared to cotton damaged by strong acid or slightly shrink or a scotch so this is the uses of a viscous rayon so majority this is used in women's wear embroidery clothing and in men's wear generally it is blended with polyester for for a trouser purpose we are using this so there is another uh, i am showing you a video which uses a slight uh, version of a tissue kind of a clothing which is also made from natural fibers so it can easily dissolves so this is again a variant of a natural fiber which we show in last video so it is uh, you can say it make a tissue like a thick fabrics and that can be easily dissolved when we sprinkle a water over it so the uh, fashion designer put their innovation in designing this kind of a materials another sustainable fiber or very good say say improved version of a viscous that is a lyocell again a similar process is used for obtaining a wood pulp but the next dissolution process is totally changed in this way so we use a special eco friendly solvent that can be recycled that is basically an methyl morphine oxide solvent that can be used multiple times so that is why this is called a sustainable fibers so this is a manufacturing process so we have a wood pulp we dissolve this in this solvent solvents and then properly mix it homogenize it and then further after filtration we spun into a fibers and this solvent which is again 
reuse, filter, filter it, refine it, and so this is a closed loop cycles. So you are not wasting any solvents. So that is why we are using the word sustainable fibers. So we in this process we have removed that aging process. So aging is a depolymerization process. So degree of polymerization in this case is very high as compared to viscous. So viscous in case the DP is around say 250 to 300. But in case of lyocell, the DP is around 500. So due to higher DP, it's and we can modification in process, we are able to achieve almost double the strength which we have in case of a viscous fiber. But due to its costly solvent which we are using, so its cost is a bit higher than that of a lyocell, but we have an improved property and make it as a sustainable fibers. So these are the some of the soft in handle, again, luscious like a silk, resistance to mildew and insects, high wet strength than viscous, less elongation than viscous do not melt. So limitation is costlier than viscous. That is the major. Otherwise, property wise, this is excellent among the regenerated cellulosic fiber categories. So these are the products. So this can be used for a clothing along with the medical tapes, wipes, cigarette filters, filters in automobiles, baby diapers. So these kind of application where we can use this uh, uh, wonderful fiber that is and that due to its high strength, this because low strength we can't use viscous in your undergarments so we can now this fiber is also used in under in some of the undergarments after blending with the cotton or 100 percent also so another wonderful fiber is nylon 6 or 66 six. these are the two variants so as we already discussed, nylon 6 is the first synthetic fiber that is produced by Carother Dewpoint Company, USA 9038. So that is made up of two monomers. So we have an adipic acid and then hexamethyl diamine. By condensation polymerization, we will get a amide linkage. So this is called a polyamide fibers. And so two monomers are having a 66 six carbon atom. So that is why we call it a carbon uh, nylon 66. So another variant of this is nylon 6. In this case, we use a monomer that is called capromagnum. So it is a ring, seven member ring structures. When we put a water into this, this ring opens. So in this case, we use a ring opening polymerizations and, and slowly and steadily add automatic start. So water it act as a catalyst in this case. So we will form this uh, another polymide six member ring that is a nylon 6. So as we synthetically manufacture this and make a fiber, we can produce any kind of a desired cross section. It could be a trilobal, it could be a circular, it could be a star shaped or it, any shape could be produced. So by producing a different shapes, we can tailor the luster property or other property of the material very easily. So this is this is a manufacturing process flowchart. So the monomers obtained from petroleum products. So petroleum, we get a cyclohexane that is converted into a caprolactam. Another petroleum product that is adipic acid and hexamethyl diamine. The by polymer polymerization process, we get nylon six six and again similar nylon six, and then. We passes through extruder and ultimately we will get fine. So melt spinning technique is used. So these nylons is a thermoplastic fiber. Fiber which belong to thermoplastic, we can melt spun very easily. Advantages, this is extremely strong, durable fibers, can be heat set into any shape, wrinkle resistance. Natural fiber have a major probably problem of a wrinkle. So this is a wrinkle resistance. No insect can eat these fibers, do not burn easily, high elasticity and high resistance to abrasions. So due to high resistance to abrasion, wherever we use a brush, so these fibers bristles are wonderful because of a high resistance to abrasion. They are not easily braided up. Some limitations like static charge generation is there due to friction, low moisture absorption, melts if it is hot and pills if we use a spun yarn. These are the some of the limitations. Otherwise, this is a wonderful fiber. So these are the applications of nylons. Your airbag, these are made up of nylon, airbag, seat belts, parachutes. So generally high performance application, we 
are not used for a normal clothing because of its high cost as compared to its counterpart that is a polyester and bags rain coats tire coats and then bunkie jumping ropes and uh, the costume which is used for a swimming these kind of applications are are we can and another video which is made i will show you about the fibers so in this video they show the fiber which uh, the garment which made up of fiber that is nylon which is waterproof in nature and high abrasion resistant and high strength these properties are shown in this video of this nylon wonderful fiber next fiber which is polyester that is also called uh, terylene dacron and arachnon so among the synthetic fibers the maximum share captured by in the market especially in the apparel is of this fiber that is a polyester fibers so this is made up of two monomeric unit ethylene glycol and terephthalic acids so by condensation polymerization this is converted to other uh, molecules so to to get a higher molecular weight so we maintain this in equal stoichiometry so that is why we make initially the intermediate product that is bhet base hydroxy ethylene terephthalate and after further polymerization we will get a pet in short form polyester is called as a pet so again we can convert it into a, any cross section it could be a round star shape or a plus kind so its surface is very smooth so we can tailor the properties as per our requirement cross sections so this is again manufacturing so we have a, both our petroleum products we have ethylene they can over by oxidation we are converted into ethylene glycol then terephthalic acid is there polymerization we get a polyester and after a spinning we will produce into either staple fiber or a sealant as per our requirements so advantage wrinkle resistance heat set superior wash performance very strong not damaged by normal weather conditions not damaged by insects resistance to most of the acids so limitation is spilling tendency of spun yarn or it will not absorb moisture that is another major limitation of polyester so these are the application areas along with the clothing other like multi tile firm stretchable shoes high temperature clothing bottles etc are made up of this one very beautiful property of this fiber is very very low gas permeability due to this region most of your cold drink bottles are always made up of pet if either they are of glass or a metal or another polymer can't be used because the polyester have only very very low gas permeability so gas will not come out of this that is why most of cold drink bottles are made up of polyesters so another video i will show you that inherently flame retardant system which is made for curtains so flame retardant tendency is shown by in this video so one is a normal fiber another is a polyester which is made flame retardant so what is the difference you can see here in this video so conventional fiber you can see catches fire easily and start burning very quickly but the special made polyester is not catch fire generally halogen based compounds are used for making this so while mat spinning process we will introduce these compounds so you can see the difference so within a minute your that is totally burn but the special flame retardant or inherently flame retardant materials yet not catch a fire it's slightly burn but fire is not spread so another very beautiful material that is polyurethane that is 
and brand name is Pandex Lycra Elastin. It is made up of two following. One is elastic unit and other is a rigid units. So that make one component give you elasticity and another give you a strength. So this is not last uh, polyurethane fiber is not directly used, but it is generally used in the core of the yarn. So you can see the core spun yarn, the center we are using. So directly not using, but it produce uh, excellent elasticity. So elongation is five to 700 times with 100% elasticity. You can stretch 500 to 700 times. Most of the undergarments, which are made up of this, provide strength without weight, very light in weight, high elasticity, almost distance to all chemicals. So it is damaged by chlorine merge and absorb little motion. These are their limitations. So these are the products. So body fitted garments are uh, contain always a, a lycra or stretchable denims nowadays you can which contain a lycra most of the undergarments you have the swim beer or a you can say cycling suit these are made up of this so other made up polyurethanes are it also can be used in paints or shoe soles or other hard kind of products another beautiful polymer that is acrylic fiber that is also called artificial wool the product which we wear in winter, which is not wool, is basically this acrylic. So it is made up of a monomer acrylic nitrone by free radical polymerization. It is converted into a poly polyacrylonitrile. So this is a, if we make a 100% acrylonitrile without using any coma monomer, this is highly crystalline material. We can even, we can't die. So that is why always we use some coma monomer which reduce its crystallinity so we can dye it and make it hygroscopic that is useful. So it also has a unique cross sections in among the synthetic fiber that could be a kidney shape or a dumbbell shapes. Depending on method of manufacturing, they have two different cross sections. It could be made by dry as well as a wet spinning process. So this is a process for manufacturing. So we have a propylene and ammonia by we can make it acrylone nitrile then by after a polymerization we have this powder kind of a material after dissolving in it is dissolved in either dmf dmso these kind of a solvents after dissolving we go through either a wet spinning or a dry spinning so in a wet spinning we use a some solvent which coagulate the fibers in dry spinning we use a hot air that evaporate the solvent and our fiber is coagulates so this way we are producing this so advantages wrinkle resistance bulky fibers provide a insulating nature so that provide a warmth resistance to most of the chemicals the limitations is may pill and attract lint absorb aspirations and become dull in the presence of if it's better wash in a normal soaps or alkaline soaps then it become a dull these are the limitations so these are the normal uses pillow cover normal clothing sweaters gloves Along with this, due to its chemical resistance, we can use for a filtration purposes. Industrial filtration, this fiber is used. Other application of acrylic polymers, if we not make a fiber that is acrylic paints, this kind of a stands, picture stands, and it's widely used acrylic polymer in paints. Acrylic paints are water repellent in nature. It gives a water repellent. And as an acrylic acid, the polymer is used in a baby a diapers. And also having a flame retardant properties. So it's for that kind of application. Another beautiful polymer that is a polypropylene. So this is dis discovered. This discovery is only possible after the development of a Ziegler Nata catalyst. So both get the Nobel Prize in 1960 for their development in a catalyst. So because problem is with this kind of a polymers. So when we uh, polymerize the polypropylene, it gives three different isomers of a different geometry. One is your atactic, another is syneotactic, and another uh, third one is isotactic. Only isotactic polymer is useful as a fibers. Other two are of no use. So this Ziegler Nata or metallocyanin catalyst only provide us a higher amount of uh, isotactic polymers. So that is only useful. So you can see its property. Isotactic has a very high melting point as compared to syndotactic. Atactic has no melting point. It means it is always in the form of a highly viscous liquids. So syndotactic polymer, uh, sorry, isotactic polymer is only used for a fibrous purpose. 
so these are the fiber manufacturing process so so we use a propylene gas along with hydrogen and then we use a catalyst that is a ziegler nada catalyst and it polymerizes and move to the next reactor unreacted polymer we can recycle it and in this way the polymerization takes place they always in the gas phase we are making it so we have we get here the polymeric chips the polymeric chips put put into extruder where we melt it filter it and melt and when cool down it is converted into a, a fibers so that is the easiest way to produce this fibers so properties very strong resistance damage by bray another benefit of this is a very very cheap fiber as compared to polyester so wherever we require a cheap products so we can go for this and it places a polyester and other fibers and very very light it density is less than one so it can easily fit nowadays this fiber is replacing jute equipment ropes and floor covering with a polypropylene due its property and it is basically insul uh, highly inert fiber is no not affected by acids as well as so the container for storage of acids as well as base could be easily made out of this so these are the application majority for other than clothing we are not using this for clothing reason being this is not a dyeable under normal set of a condition and highly hydrophobic in nature so it will not absorb sweat so not suitable for clothing but otherwise other applications are another beautiful fiber that is a polythene polythene is generally used for a packing purposes least is used for a clothing and that so it is also lit by a accidental discovery by ICI in UK so they use initially a ethylene gas and under high pressure in the presence of catalyst they produce a low density polythene and that is used for a packing purpose so after coming a ziegler nata catalyst so we are able to synthesize a high density polythene so what is the difference between this so these are the three type of polythenes are there low density polythene linear low density and high density so in a low density polythene there are cross links are there or you can say grafted chains are there not cross links but as we move to our linear low density the cross, this branching is reduced the polymer become more compact and we further in move toward hdp there is no branches are there so further so the strength as well as the density is increasing as we so this is only possible by using a ziegler nata catalyst and this also have a high density polythene has a wider application as compared to linear density polythenes so again similar process as in polypropylene we have discussed so advantages strong not damaged by not affected by any chemicals low cost material light in weight but in not accept dye in normal condition and non absorbent that is why it is not very popular among a, for a clothing so it could be used in by dentist in floss etc ropes pipes nets these kind of applications we use another major category of fiber that is functional and high performance fibers are there so ma'am i think i am out of time should i continue or stop here hello functional and high performance fiber so i try to quickly wind in 5 minutes so as the uh, name yes sir because we have to send students to the auditorium now so if you wind, uh, wind up in one or two minutes sir so i will quickly go through this yes these are uh, aromatic nylons so that are very very high strength materials so these are three variants which are spun by a special technology it can dissolve in only in sulfuric acids so it is high strength inherently flame retardants and high thermal stability is there so these kind of applications where we use so these are not used for normal clothing they are very stiff flame retardant kind of a properties are there so these are their different variants another is pba fiber this is also high inherently flame retardant material non melting but they are very costly for us. that is why they are only for a specific application not for a where the flame retardancy or high performance high thermal stability is required so another category is high high performance polythene 
that is a polythene but it is made up of very very high molecular weight so that is why it is used for applications like again stab resistance cut resistance kind of a materials and bulletproof jackets etc another fiber that is a carbon fibers that is again a highly thermally stable this is made from a pan polyacrylonitrile which which is used for acrylic fibers so its properties are 75% lighter than steel more durable non corrosive almost five times stronger than steel and stiffer but all major limitation of this is that is always available in black in color you can't use make a other color out of this otherwise it is among the strongest available fiber so these kind of applications bicycles rocket uh, rackets helmets car bodies we are using then uh, optical fiber this is for optical communication so narendra singh company is the father of this called optical fibers so this is used for basically transmission of uh, signals and other applications are like optical fiber in medical sciences for diagnostic and other application purposes so this is the last slide development in fiber technology nowadays instead of uh, making fabric and then converted into by stitching and gunty they are using a spray they you are using a fiber a spray a spray on the body of a person and make a output depending upon so there is no need to take a dimension so these kind of developments are taking place in a fiber technologies so take away from this lecture each fiber is a fi fabulous fiber due to its unique property feature and applications fiber make our life very comfortable fiber makes products lightweight durable as compared to metal and wooden products product made of fibers are more sustainable and energy efficient man made fiber products are cheaper more affordable as compared to natural so we can't live without fibers in a modern era so thank you very much any query please Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your valuable insight uh, on today's topic. So if any participant is having any query, they can write in the chat box. In the meanwhile, I would just want to show you a video compilation, which we got uh, because we got so many um, participation in poster presentation. So I'm sharing my screen. Sorry, I just want to share again. And, and sir, uh, before a formal vote of thanks, I just want to show you the participation which we got. Definitely, man, no problem.
Yes, so thank you all the participants for uh, your overwhelming response in poster presentation. So for formal, uh, uh, before that, I just want to say one thing that the results of poster competition will be declared later on and will be communicated in WhatsApp group and on emails, right? Because we have uh, got so many uh, participation and we have extended till 20th, right? Uh, now I would like to invite Dr. Uh, Swati for form formal vote of thanks. So Uh, a very good afternoon to one and all. On the behalf of PG Department of Chemistry, I would like to thank Dr. Sajin for his very wonderful talk. So it was quite informative and interesting also. So you have explained very well the different types of fibers, their synthesis, composition, morphological studies, and their various applications. Uh, in our MSc second year class, also there is one subject, surface and polymer chemistry. So uh, I'm sure that the students have learned a lot from your talk. So thank you so much, sir. And uh, we would really like to hear you again in our future events. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, and uh, if any participant wants to ask any questions or, or they have any query, they can do that. Uh, either you can write in the chat, Zoom chat box or unmute yourself and ask directly from the sir. If any participants want to share something or say something, they can do that. You can raise your hand if you have any query. <laughs> I think, sir, there are no queries. Thank so, you, sir. Uh, it's been really very informative and very knowledgeable session. You just uh, enlightened the importance of all the things and each and every category and also the characterizations and applications principles and the main role and procedures of all the things it's been really very uh, insightful session sir and thank you for all the organizers and the co-hosts and hosts for giving us a wonderful opportunity to gain loads of knowledge uh, from this wonderful platform thank you all thank you so much ma'am uh, sir, there is one query in the Zoom chat box. Uh, I just want to share how the carbon fibers preparation can be made simple in terms of processing. Manufacturing or processing means what does a processing means here? Because problem is uh, carbon fibers requires a very, very high temperature for the removal of uh, the impurities which based on a fiber. For example, we are using if we use. So if we use some develop some catalyst, catalysts are only possible make to reduce this temperature. So people, lot of people are working in this area. So only the catalyst make a possible to reduce the manufacturing temperature. But in the end, again, some processes are there. It takes again a very, very long time, I think. We have to get, go a long way to do that. Thank you, sir. So I think there are no more queries. So thank you, dear participants. And uh, thank you, my dear students, for attending this uh, webinar and on a wonderful topic, Fabulous Fibers. And I especially thank uh, participants from different parts of India, right? So we are um, again uh, organizing uh, one more uh, uh, a workshop on greener and safer chemistry on 21st. So we would like to have you in that also. So thank you so much, Dr. Sachin, sir, for your valuable